Hey folks, JD here, and today this is the second part of the Helifair. This is where we're going to be looking at the collision avoidance system and seeing exactly how that works. Does it work well? Does it work at all? Is it a gimmick? Can I get it to work properly? Well, I don't know the answer to any of those questions. What I'm expecting is, going off the first video, when I had my hand underneath her, she pushed away. So I'm expecting there to be these sensors underneath to work. At the side, I don't really know. I couldn't, when I had my hand there, I don't think it moved, so I'm not really expecting that to work. But there's only one way to find out. Let's take her up to an altitude, let's trim her out, and let's make sure she's nice and stable, and then I'm going to start playing with these sensors with my hand and see exactly how this goes. So, folks, let's just get her straight up in the air. All right, we're up. And once again, see, there's nothing on the increase of speed. So, I'm just going to trim her out a little bit just to get her to stop moving backwards so much. I think she's moving backwards. What happens if I click down? Then I've got altitude. Yes, it's an unlock mechanism. <laughs> sneaky, very sneaky, very good. Okay, which way is she moving? She's floating sort of to the, to, the, to the left, isn't she, really? So let's just trim her out a little bit and see exactly how we're going with that. Doesn't look as if she really wants to this time. Right, then we can, we'll can we have to use her exactly how she wants to be used. So, with this, what I'm going to do is just steady her a little bit, and then I'm going to try and see whether I can... Is there any sort of... Are these working? There's a, a button on here called an interactive sensing switch. But it, every time I click it, it doesn't seem to do anything. There's no response. But yet, there doesn't seem to be any sort of clickage from it and these two dead buttons here obviously aren't assigned let's put that into speed mode too let's see if I can move her yeah I can see I can push her with my hand ooh, ooh. what I meant by that was I can actually have my hand under the sensor not actually that I can push the quad um, let's try it again see it's this sensor here that is what it means by collision avoidance. These side little sensors, side bulbs, nothing whatsoever. And from this side, nothing. Nothing. But under there, yeah, I can push her up a little bit. And it literally is maybe a fraction of an inch. There really isn't that much that you can push her up. See that speed mode three, not much of a discernible difference. Um, so that is more of a gimmicky thing, as I'm sure a lot of you would have guessed. More of a gimmicky thing than anything that you can't... That, I, if it's going to come close to a wall or a solid object, i.e. my hand, it doesn't do anything. All it does uh, is it just carries on in, on the path that it was set out to carry on on. So what I'm going to take from that is quite simply, if I have my hand underneath her, Let's try it again. Now it should be that she increases altitude maybe a couple of millimetres. Watch. See? There we go. And she does. She goes up ever so slightly. But that's not enough to make an, a collision avoidance system. Because, uh, well, for, for a start, a collision avoidance system, it has to have a set of sensors that needs to read X amount of distance in front of itself. It needs to know exactly where it's at, where where it's headed and what's in its path. Like now, a collision avoidance system would probably pick up that there's a tree to the left. On the spark, I know for a fact it would. And it would say da 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 da, -da four meters ahead of you. Um, whereas with this, you need to be so close that okay, this isn't gonna cause any damage if it hits you, it's just gonna be a mild inconvenience. But at the same time, if it does hit you, it's not going to stop, it's not going to read or sense. And how do I know that? Because if I walk into it... There is... Nothing stopping it. See? There's nothing stopping it from doing anything. If that was anything else, there probably would have been a beep and it probably would have moved, you know, it would have moved away from me. That didn't, that stayed exactly where it was set, on, on the course it was set. So, total gimmicky thing, uh, but there is an unlock procedure. So when you put, you have to pull her down on the throttle first, down to zero, and then up to 100 to get her to increase altitude. That is novel. I've not seen that before. And this 
interactive sensing switch. Every time you click it, it doesn't do anything. Is that the battery? Yeah, battery LEDs. It doesn't do anything. Now, okay, that's no problem. It's a bit of a gimmick. This was extremely cheap. I'm not angry. I'm glad I've tested it, as I'm glad with all the ones, including the ones that you failed. I'm glad I'm testing them because then you guys stay away from them. This guy, I wouldn't be as quick to judge because it flies well. There's no camera, there's no video relay, it's basic. Um, but it's a nice little flyer. It's not fast, it's a great little beginner quad. If you've never flown indoors, I would honestly say it's a great beginner quad. Look at it go. That's in speed mode 3. That is not quick. <laughs> that is not quick at all. And back. You know, it is not quick. It's a nice little bit of fun though. And that you can't take away from. And I think a lot of people sometimes are very quick to quickly judge with some copters. Some of them are glaringly terrible. But some of them as well, like this, I think this is okay. This isn't going to go into my top 10, but it's okay. As a beginner quad, it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> Easy to control. You know, all the all the controls really extremely easily. No problem there whatsoever. So all in all, yeah, I'm a fan of it. I like it. How can you not like it? It's a nice little copter. It doesn't do much. But what it does do, it does well. And that is fly. There we are, folks. Right. Ooh. Ooh. Brought it down a little bit too quickly then. Okay. Let's knock her off. There we go. Transmitter, though. I haven't spoken a lot about this. It's great. Transmitter is really good. Transmitter is very comfortable. It's very light. It Analog sticks move extremely easily. The buttons depress very easily. Three buttons don't work. The interactive sensing switch or cine switch. And these two dead buttons. Right, I said these two dead buttons in the unboxing didn't work. So that's that's no shock. Um, all in all though, nice little bit of kit this. Sturdy. Very sturdy. On and off button at the bottom. So far, can't find any problem with it at all. Very nice little bit of kit. This. Bit of, it's got some gimmicky things attached to it but at the same time it flies very well you know and today we've got an extremely still day and it did very well i'm very happy with how it flew the um the collision avoidance system you could see as my hand was coming underneath it it was increasing altitude but it was quite literally a couple of inches at a time uh, that's it <laughs> um but still it is what it is this guy is a bit of fun if you're a beginner if you've never flown before dive right dive right in and get it I like it as a little beginner copter because it's not fast in any speed mode. You can control it well. It'll teach you exactly how to fly. But if you are experienced or if you do want to go for a little nano copter for indoors, I probably wouldn't get it. All right then, folks. Thank you ever so much for watching and listening. I've been JD. You've been fantastic as always. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Hello and welcome to all the new subscribers. I hope you're enjoying the channel. So until next time, my friends, happy flying.